If you download cracked software, you might get more than you bargained for. Hey, Andy, I understand uh, you're looking at a story, you know, sometimes you go or you shouldn't be going and downloading, you know, unlocking software. Uh, you know, for pirate copies of things, but sounds like somebody's uh, delivering more than you bargained for when you uh, go to do that. Yeah, that's certainly the case here. So uh, Hacker News put out a, a report about this this malware called CryptoBot that's being delivered um, via illegitimate versions of a software called KMS Pico. So for those who Follow the rules. Uh, KMS Pico is a software that's used to activate Windows licenses without actually having the license key. So clearly this is the software that Microsoft isn't very fond of. Um, it's not strictly legal, um, but there is there have been a number of sort of fake versions of that already illegitimate tool that is pushing this crypto bot malware. Um, and what this malware is doing is it's actually targeting uh, cryptocurrency credentials, um, that's kind of its main goal, but it's officially categorized as an information stealer. So it can do other things like steal credentials out of your browser. Um, it can steal credentials from cookies. It could even take screenshots of the screen once it's installed. Um, it looks for credit card information, some other stuff. Uh, so it's, you know, it's pretty, it's a useful tool, I guess, from an attacker's standpoint. Um, but I, I thought it w this, this story was a little funny because of the fact that KMS Pico itself is illegitimate software, it's not strictly legal. And, um, you know, typically when you go and get cracked software of legitimate software, of, of official software, you know, you kind of know that you're getting cracked software, you're, you're sort of aware of the risks at least. And it just sort of, this downloading um, like a cracked version, I guess not a cracked version, but like a weaponized version of already illegitimate software just kind of adds to that, that layer. So that that was kind of an interesting aspect to uh, to this whole thing. But the Hacker News reports that uh, weaponized versions of, of this of the KMS Pico software um, are being distributed via websites that are claiming to be the official version of the already kind of unofficial software. So I thought that was interesting. But uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I mean, we've seen this before, right, where people trojanize, um, you know, uh, even other legitimate stuff if they can get into the supply chain of, of things. But the thing I was thinking about with this, and I haven't really confirmed that this is their thinking, but it's probably a smart thinking on the bad guy's behalf, is by trojaning an already illegitimate tool, when the victim goes and installs like KMS Pico, they might get some kind of alert or something that says, you know, um, you know, maybe Microsoft uh, antivirus or whatever antivirus they're running says, hey, this looks a little sketchy. Are you sure you want to install this? Um, and they already know that, well, this is like a software cracker. So that's probably what they're flagging, not the fact that it's been trojanized with a credential stealer um, as well. So, you know, in that respect, I think you know, they might get more uptake, the bad guys, on getting people to install it because they're already doing something illegal um, that they think that, like, legitimate tools like antivirus might flag as, you know, not a good thing. Um, the other thing I noticed was, you know, a few years, you know, we do malware analysis on occasion, and I had looked at some of these crackers that you can download um, at one point a few years ago, and I remember running a couple of them through Virus Total, and it just lit up with like multiple different types of malware. So it wasn't even dropping just like one thing, like this one is, in terms of like a credential stealer. It was dropping like six or seven um, additional payloads onto the machine once you installed it. Um, so you know, I would say I would strongly advise people against uh, using software crackers or downloading these. Um, you know, uh, key maker type tools that they have for various commercial software products. Um, uh, not only because it's illegal, but because you're, you're probably going to get more than you bargained for with these things. So. Yeah, yeah. So it, it could contain malware, uh, I think is one thing. Uh, you can get into some legal trouble because it's not legal to do these things. Um, you know, the software that you download, you've got, typically you got to go to shady websites to do it. 
and that could lead to other issues. I mean, it's it's rare that you'll find a crack crack software on a you know a a well known site a site that you know you can download legitimate software from. Could affect other devices on your network depending on what is what the software is you're downloading is purporting to do. And then at the end of the day, you could download the software and then it could just not work. On top of that, so on top of the fact that it can you can contain not just one type of malware but a bunch of different ones as you've mentioned. Um, you know, there's a, there's other reasons to to stay away from cracked software, and you mentioned uh, this isn't the first time we've seen this. You know, earlier this year even there was the the Krakenosh malware um, that was um, the cracked copies of, of popular software were containing this malware uh, that was basically mining crypto and you know using your system resources. And then even earlier in the year there was a student who who I think was part of a, a research institution who downloaded a um, a cracked version of, of what was dubbed an expensive data visualization tool and ended up downloading Ryuk as well and wow. uh, took their credentials and then entered the, the network of the research institution with those credentials uh, and compromised that whole network. So, there, I mean, this is not the first time this has happened. Um, this is pretty common and there's just a lot of reasons to avoid it. So I think the, the, the takeaway for, you know, kind of normal people like you and I, uh, stay away from crack software, I think is a big one. And, uh, if your computer pings you and says, Hey, are you sure you want to download this? This, this seems a little shady. Um, don't, don't come to, don't make assumptions. <laughs> I'll say. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, and maybe run it through virus silver before you install it or do it yeah. in a sandbox or something, you know, like yeah. a machine that you don't care about that you can throw away um, if you really have to. But uh, it would strongly you know, recommend against it. So the last thing I wanted to mention is I, I wanted to sort of answer the question, what, what's the likelihood of me getting malware if I download a crack software? And um, I didn't find super recent data, but I did find a, a joint study between the National, Univer National University of Singapore and the, uh, and the IDC, or the International Data Corporation. In 2014, they came out with a report, among other things, but they found that consumers and enterprises have a 33% chance of encountering malware when they obtain and install a pirated software package or buy a PC with pirated software on it. So. That's obviously from 2014. That's you know coming up on eight years old. I would argue, or I would imagine, that that number is probably the same, if not higher. And a 33% chance is by no means a negligible chance of getting malware. Uh, that sh that in and of itself, statistically, should tell you that downloading pirated software or cracked software is generally not a good idea. Right. Right. Yeah, I would imagine nowadays it's probably 50% or higher. <laughs> you know, like a coin flip, whether or not you're going to get mad. It's probably even higher. But that's just me, yeah. like my gut instinct. But uh, yeah, yeah, interesting and a good one for people to be aware of if they're not already, um, so that they can kind of stay away from it. Because, like you said, it can impact your whole, you know, company after enterprise, especially if it's, you know, got ransomware or something that's going to, you know, move laterally onto other machines uh, yeah. within the network once it gets onto your machine. So, uh, could yeah. do a lot of damage. Yep. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning too that 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 uh, previous case with that student with the uh, research institution, they had they had downloaded it on their personal machine. It just so happens that they used their personal machine to VPN into their enterprise's network, and of course those credentials were somewhere on the machine uh, ready to be harvested. So that's a great call out. It, it could be it it could lead to lateral uh, movement, which is not good. Right. Another good reason that in your corporate VPN. You should not allow just anybody to log on with any old machine that they have. Mm -hmm. It should be like a company-owned machine that you maybe have, you know, some sort of mutual certificate that needs to be installed on that machine uh, to make sure that that's a trusted machine that has, you know, a good level of antivirus running on there that is, you know, managed by your your company. Because um, we've seen that in the past as well at other companies where, you know, they allow employees to bring their own devices and in doing so they can you know introduce more risk into the network enterprise in doing so just like you explained there yeah